So I look very silly in this machine. And the reason I'm in here is that the longer I go without cutting my hair, the younger I look. If you base my age on the YouTube comments on my videos, I'm somewhere between a 14 and 16 year old boy. And the other thing that people are saying is that I look like the reference model for the Lego minifig. I'm not really seeing the resemblance, but it's time to cut my hair. I would rather not have someone cut my hair who's touching 100 other people's heads all day long. So I built this robot and it is a hair cutting robot. It's gonna cut my hair the hard way using scissors. No trimmers or any easy mode like that. And I think it works, so I don't know because I still have all my hair. I haven't tested it yet. And I'm a little bit worried because the initial trials with the dummy didn't go totally smoothly, but I think I've mostly worked out those software bugs. I did a quick dry run just a little bit before this just to see if everything was working without cutting and it had this other problem of ripping my hair out. Ah, ow. I've fixed it now. The fingers clamp a lot less hard than they did before. I'm glad I tested that. And even if this thing gives me a terrible haircut, I still feel like I've won. How many people have a robot made haircut? It's basically art. My prediction is that it's gonna give me somewhere between completely terrible and a $5 haircut. Well, I've put this off as long as I possibly can. So this is the first haircut that it's ever going to attempt. So let's do it. So how about that weather? I don't know. I mean, I guess it's warm out. Oh, well, cool. You can tell from my face that I wasn't sure if it was completely wrecking my hair or not. I honestly was not sure if this was gonna work because it was a hard problem. So the hard part, even with the robot, is handling the hair. The hair wants to go all over the place and what you need to do is separate out a very local chunk of hair and you don't want to have any other hair trapped in that chunk. And so that's what a lot of the combing and finger work that stylists are doing, it's to separate out the hairs. I knew in my heart that trying to build a robot that works like a stylist to separate out hair was a bad idea. I still tried to do it that way initially. Before I go way off the deep end into the details, I need to take care of just a little bit of housekeeping. So I'm 90% sure what I want to build next. I want to hit a baseball really far, like really far. It just sounds like good old fashioned fun to me. I'm excited because I found the perfect thing to put some extra pep into my swing. This is a device which shoots nails into concrete using basically bullets. So that's cool. I'm super aware of the safety considerations here. I'm going to be doing this very carefully in a very safe way. So no need to tell me to be safe in the comments, but if you want to, you can. If that sounds as awesome to you as it does to me, you should subscribe to follow along and see how it goes. And then these videos are very time consuming and expensive to make. If you wanna help support making more awesome things and more videos, you can check out the Patreon. And in exchange, I'm giving more behind the scenes content. Probably the coolest thing is the Discord server. I'm having a whole lot of fun hanging out in there with people and getting advice on my projects. All right, that's enough of that. Back to the fun stuff. How about the sports team? I mean, I don't think there really are any right now, right? Oh, well, cool. The first concept that I was trying to do involved two combs and do a complicated series of motions to select just the hair that I want. I even designed the mechanism to do it and it was pretty cool. The problem was, I just couldn't find a way to do this reliably without some kind of camera to see what's going on. But ultimately trying to figure out where the hair is with a camera is a nightmare of PhD proportions. I think to try this would be insane. I told you that's an insane design. It's way too hard. You need to pull out the essential things that it needs to do and then design a way to do them that's easier for a robot. The way to go here is a vacuum. It's gonna make life a lot easier. Yeah, so as he so rudely interjected, I did have some alternate ideas that at least on paper seemed a good bit easier. Since when is it rude to have good ideas? You know, I'm really looking forward to seeing you stick your big head into this robot. My head? No. You're the one with the bad ideas. Anyway, I came up with another way of grabbing hair that uses a vacuum that is a whole lot easier than what I was gonna do before. The vacuum sucks all the hair straight up, and then if I slide two fingers in, I get just the hair that I want and no hair from the sides. The way the cutter head turned out to do this is pretty cool. It only takes three servos, so here's the fingers. The scissors are on a little stage driven by a servo and then the scissors are actuated by another servo. So putting these things together, I can move the fingers, grab some hair, lift up, and then cut. Unfortunately, this wig hair is, it's like wire, so the scissors can't cut it. This is unfortunate because I wanted to test it on a wig, but it doesn't work, so I'm gonna have to be the first real haircut. This explains the sense of impending doom in the pit of my stomach. Do anything fun this weekend. It was really sad, my dog died. Oh, well, cool. 
The other big challenge of this hair cutting attachment is how do I move it to all the different locations on the head? And so what I did is rather than having a three axis system, I have an arm that can move in and out and up and down only. And so it can reach the face and it can reach the head. Then I rotate the entire head. So I want to reach the side. I just rotate the head and now I'm touching the side. And so rotating the head is hard because I'd have to rotate my whole body. I do the equivalent thing, which is I rotate the entire robot around the head. I always need to be pointing at the head when I cut. So I'm cutting on the top, I need the scissors to be pointing this way. If I'm cutting on the side, they need to be pointing this way. And so I added a whole extra rotational mechanism to the, to the robot gantry to allow this. One other problem that I ran into that really annoyed me because it just made things way more complicated is that depending on where you're cutting on the head, you want the scissors to be going different directions. So when I cut the bangs, I want to be cutting across the head. I don't want to be cutting vertically. If I cut vertically, I'm going to end up with a diagonal sawtooth bangs, which is going to make me look like a complete idiot. So I added a whole new axis to my robot that allows me to rotate the cutter head. This machine is made with a bunch of different techniques. The first is plasma cut and folded sheet metal. You can see the plasma cutter is drawing these marker lines, and that's so I can bend the parts very accurately so that they fit together later. Some of the plasma cut parts are spot welded together, and you can see I'm using a little access port so that I can reach the spot welds inside this thing. There was only one machine part, and that was because I was able to 3D print pretty much everything. This is great because they're complicated shapes, which have been very difficult to make. Everything is built on top of this giant bearing, which is what my head goes through. And then there's a simple two axis gantry. I need to cut a hole in a sheet of plywood, which this CNC router I just got would be perfect for, but it's not set up. So I had to make a tool to do it. Using your tools to make new tools is one of life's great pleasures anyway. So it was fun. And then everything rides in this stand I built, which bolts to my workbench. So electrically, there's really not that much interesting. There's four big stepper drivers, which are responsible for controlling the different motors. There's a microcontroller, it's a teensy, that's running the show. It's communicating with the computer for receiving commands and all that stuff. It is a giant mess, but there's nothing like a good facade to give the impression that everything is okay. All right, how are you feeling? I'm a mess. I mean, I am good, thanks, how are you? Can't beat a facade. When can I cut your wife's hair? It's not gonna happen, trust me, I tried. All right, what if I give you a haircut that is a superset of another haircut that you want? Then, if something goes wrong, we can cut your hair down to that other haircut. What do you mean if something goes wrong? I mean, I don't plan on anything going wrong. It's just, it's a prototype and sometimes stuff happens. I already like my hair. But come on, it's important. It's for humanity. Humanity again? Yeah, there's all these people stuck at home in quarantine and they want to look good. How does getting my haircut help? It just does. That doesn't make any sense. Just put your head in the robot. It's that easy. You just put it in and it'll cut it. My analysis is that you've made yourself into the man who cried wolf. Even if you really mean well, you're not going to be able to convince. Where did that come from? Oh, well, cool. One of the big challenges of getting this robot to work is that it needs to know where my head is in order to cut the right length. If my head is here, it's going to cut a different length than if my head is here. Your head moves around a good bit, and I'd rather not have every little movement that my head does baked into my haircut. I spent way too much time trying to get this depth camera working. So this is an Intel RealSense depth camera. And what I was doing is doing facial recognition to find where my head is, and then combining it with the depth data to figure out where my head is in 3D space. But there is a really big problem with this, which this camera is completely blocked by the stand a lot of the time. Even when it's not directly in front of it, it really blocks it. And I could maybe deal with that, but it makes the software so much more complicated. I just didn't think it was worth it. What I ended up doing is I put a little switch on these fingers and this allows me to move and sense when it hits my head. And then I can use that to measure a bunch of different points on my head and figure out roughly where it is. So say I get a little bit too comfortable in here and I kind of move over to the side. It knows because it has this probe. Move back, move back, move back, move back, move okay. back. Move my head. All right, we're back in business. How do you tell a robot what haircut you want? The way that I solved this problem is I took a 3D model of a head and I painted on it the haircut that I want. Basically, lighter is longer, darker is shorter. At first glance, this looks like I want to be a balding man, but it actually makes sense to the robot. The other thing I have to tell the robot is what angle to cut at because I want it to cut my bangs horizontally and I want it to cut around my ears. So this isn't telling the robot that I want a giant unibrow. This time the robot cut the bangs horizontally and then cut around my ear. 
the robot will load this 3D model and then knowing how big of an area the scissors cut, it will compute a plan of the minimum number of locations it needs to cut at to make my hair the desired length. And then as it's doing that plan, it'll, it'll cut one and then go to the next one and the next one. At each location, it will check the unibrow model to see if it should cut at a specific angle. And if so, it'll do that. At least that's the plan in theory. I haven't done it yet. Hopefully it works, but we're doing it live. So here's the whole haircut from start to finish. Heads up, I look completely insane in this time lapse. I think it's a weird time lapse artifact, but also I was terrified of it ruining my hair. So it's probably also a bit of fear. Midway through, I realized there was a bug in my code that made it cut about six times as many locations on my head as it needed to. I thought it was taking a while. So it took about an hour, but it should only take more like 15 minutes. Every time the robot goes to cut a location, it probes to find where my head is at. And then the length that it cuts is relative to where it probed. This is the main reason it could maintain accurate hair lengths, even though I was moving around. So you can see the vacuum sucking a bunch of extra hair into the tube, but the fingers that grab the hair have little guards on them that keep hair that they aren't grabbing from being cut. Making this robot hit the desired location on my head was pretty hard. Not only does it have a bunch of joints that are somewhat challenging to compute where the heck the scissors are gonna go, my head is moving. And then the design of the robot doesn't allow it to approach my head from all possible angles. I have to find the best achievable angle that the robot can do. I have a suspicion my math isn't always correct, but thankfully my hair all turned out the right length. All right, the cut is done. What did the salon's first customer have to say? All right, two out of 10, not great. Zero personality, I can believe that. Top and sides are cut well, nice, nice. But it gave me a mullet. What? The robot cut the hairs that it could reach really well. But there's two problems. The first is it can't get close enough to my ears. So I have all this hair right by my ears that's really long. That should be pretty easy and fast to clean up. But the big problem is it gave me a robotically perfect mullet. So it just couldn't get quite low enough to cut the last maybe inch of the back of my hair. I had planned to have it rotate, which dropped it by about an inch, maybe an inch and a half, but the scissors interfere with the stand and it just couldn't do it. So I said I thought it was gonna give me a $5 haircut. I think that was right. I think even for $5, they don't normally give you a mullet. Man, thank goodness I didn't prank my wife with this machine because I had to just go give her a pair of scissors and ask her to fix my hair. I'm actually really happy it gave me the mullet. There's just something deeply satisfying about a robot giving me a perfect mullet. All she did was cut those off. She didn't touch the top at all. And overall, I'd say it's really not bad. I checked some of the lengths, they seem right on, and I'd pay $5 for this haircut. I don't get another shot at cutting my hair for a month or two, but I think I might try to upgrade this to cut closer to the ears, to not generate perfect mullets, and then maybe also add a trimmer or something like that so that it can do the neckline for me. So hopefully you enjoyed this, it was a fun project. Thanks for watching.